Hello, I'm Simon. And I'm Dan. And this is the Wikicast, a podcast where Wikipedia takes us to a random article and we talk about what we find. Dan, what are we talking about this week? This week, Simon, we are talking about Pierce the Plowman's Creed. Oh. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know why, but whenever you come up with an article title, I'm like, oh, that wasn't what I was expecting. Yeah. As if I well, could somehow predict. <laughs> I think excitingly, you know, every now and then when we click random article and we announce uh, with great pride that we might have a new kind of category that we haven't really featured before. Mm. I think I think we might have one here. If it wasn't obvious enough by Pierce the Plowman's Creed. <laughs> have you come okay, across with it. the what title is, of before? I, is it ringing any faint I, I cannot, bells? Pierce, Pierce the Plowman does actually ring a bell, but I couldn't tell you why. It could be a pub, in fairness. Or the, the Plowman's right. Creed could certainly be a pub somewhere in rural Somerset. But I swear Pierce the Plowman Somerset. is like... It's a, it's like a a classic character, almost like a Decameron or a Commedia dell'arte kind of character. Well, we'll dive in and let's see if if there's any any creed to that. Pierce the Plowman's Creed is a medieval alliterative poem of eight hundred and fifty five lines. Of course, it's bloody poetry. Lam- lampooning the four orders of friars. Oh, yeah. oh, okay. That's pretty fun. Yeah, surviving in two complete 14th century manuscripts and two early printed editions, the Creed can be dated on internal evidence to the short period between 1393 and 1400. The two manuscripts both include Piers Plowman, and in the f- and in the first, the Creed serves as an introduction to a sea text version of Piers Plowman. Additionally. Uh, BLMS Harley 78 contains a fragment of the creed copied uh, circa 1460 to 70. So it's interesting that you mentioned Piers Plowman. So I just Googled him um, as, as if he was going to have like a Twitter page. Uh, Piers Plowman was, sorry, is a, a Middle English allegorical narrative poem by William Langland. Indeed. So it's it's just sort of you know, like it's been a character, it's been a thing in English literature for so long that it's kind of passed into one of those archetypes, I guess. Mm. Oh, Piers Plowman contains the first known reference to the literary tradition of Robin Hood. How interesting! It also mentioned really cool. in the at the start of the uh, of the Piers Plowman article, uh, it it likens Piers Plowman to Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, which I read in my first year of uh, university. I've listened to the um, in our time about Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. I've not actually read it. Like the actual text, but mm. like I'm familiar with the story. Um, is is it worth reading? Yeah, I'd say so. I think it's worth it's worth reading if you have a kind of interest in the academic. I think it's a good. I mean, it's a it's a good narrative, um, but the kind of the reason as to why it's been so kind of famous and has been carried on through the centuries is is super interesting. Definitely recommend mm. it. Well, okay. Well, never mind all this actual educational stuff, Dan. And, I, and it's poetry, so I can tell that you're champing at the proverbial bit to oh, talk about God, it. I can't wait. But how the devil are you? We haven't done an episode for a little while. Well, I'm all right. You know, I'm I'm okay. It it, it seems only yesterday that we we were reclining in uh, in the North York Dales. Uh, that's the th- so that's one of the reasons why we. Uh, we haven't done an episode for a little while because mm. um, we we actually met up in person. We we went off with our friend uh, Hugo Wickman um, to uh, and and a friend, your brother, mm. uh, was also there. Yeah, um, my keeper was also there, Pixel Girl, uh, and um, we had a well, Pixel Girl and I just had a couple of days of getting bevved and um, going on walks. Whereas you were up there for like a full week, I believe, more or less. Yeah, we we drove up on the Friday a Friday evening and drove back down the following Thursday afternoon. And what did you get up to whilst um, after Pixel Girl and I left? Oh, just general kind of antics really. There was a lot of walking. Um, you'll recall on the first day the first proper day we were there because I don't think we went, we went no we did, maybe we did go for a walk in the afternoon I can't remember. Yes there's we the, did. Yeah. That's the big um, reservoir 
uh, that we kind of we looked across. Oh, we, the we one, <laughs> the one that I crested the hill and went. Oh, that's disappointing. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we couldn't actually walk out onto the reservoir, like it was gated <laughs> off, and I just crested the top of the hill after this walk, and I was like, oh, well, that's disappointing. And everyone in the group proceeds to turn to you and go, "Can you just not appreciate anything? Is it is it so hard <laughs> to marvel at? I mean, it was a, the thing is the thing that makes that Simon's comment comment worse is that it was such a beautiful spot. It was really lovely but because simon wanted to walk on the kind of the stone bridge that kind of bordered the reservoir the, the dam yeah the dam exactly he he got it was, he had a i was a just disappointed I, I didn't have a strop i was it was more of a like it was almost like you've had a child that you know isn't particularly bright and you get their like predicted grades back and you're like oh that's disappointing <laughs> it's like, also i'm I not mean, necessarily surprised but like i was kind of hoping you might not have stropped but you were dangerously close to stropping when you realized that there, we, there wasn't really a plan we were just walking and you were very concerned oh, about dinner don't get me started <laughs> I can't stand it when we're just like, oh, what are we going to do then? I don't know. We'll just walk in that direction and see what happens. No, what what the f*** are you doing? Like, we're just going to walk until we hit what? The Arctic Circle? I like I like organised fun. I like having a plan. I don't really like just randomly coming up with a kind of on the fly idea. Hmm. But the harmless walk, even you wouldn't tolerate. Um, but it, it was a lovely a walk. harmless walk. We just, we didn't have a plan, Dan. <laughs> we just walked. We p- literally just picked a direction and just went in a straight line. What? What's the point? To well, quote our friend Lily. Yeah. Well, we ended up, to cut a long story short, uh, we walked around the entire reservoir, which was great. It was really lovely. Oh, nice. um, and we were due to stop off in the northeastern corner of the reservoir. There was a little hamlet called Ramsgill. Uh, and we were meant to be stopping off there because there was a very nice pub called the York Arms. And of course, Sod's Law. I believe we did this walk on a Tuesday uh, and the pub is closed on Tuesdays. Oh, you're joking. So we got there and it was completely, I mean, just dead. It was a beautiful day, absolutely stunning. And, and the pub looked gorgeous, but we couldn't get in. So we had very cleverly packed a couple of bottles of water and several pork pies and sat under the shade of a tree in this kind of village green and ate our pork pies and then proceeded with the rest of the kind of walk around the other half of the reservoir. But it was just really nice. That sentence there is one of the more Dan Moore things I think I've ever heard you say. Thank you. (laughs) I do try. I do try. But it was, yeah, it was great. It was just good to get out in the fresh air, out of Exeter for a bit, clear your head. Um, Through the week, because you left at the end of the weekend, every evening Mm. was usually consistent of somebody would... We take it in turns to kind of cook dinner. We'd light the log burning stove. Uh, we'd get some drinks on the go. We'd play some games, and it was just really brilliant. Really, really nice. It felt it felt like everything was kind of going back to normal. Because we should point out that we had there was fewer than six people doing this. So in the UK <laughs> currently, uh, that's all right. Yes. Um, Although not and, for long. Well, no. no yeah, come no, it's still Monday, okay if you're six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, 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 uh, but it was uh, still a bit it being uh, guidelines, and for the most part, we were, I think, because it was what three, four households technically yeah. um, that were meeting together, uh, and you know, I don't think it was a terribly high risk thing to do. No, we were all we were all wearing as soon if we went into the village or the pub, we were all wearing masks um if we were we were so rural i mean it mm. was we were mild the, the closest village which is pateley bridge was about a 25 minute walk away so where we were in our little cottage um i think was fine we were sensible it was just so lovely to feel like we'd left 2020 behind yeah you know it, really it was. was a really idyllic experience but but that was a long way of saying this is why we haven't done an episode for a while because we were basically recording well we were doing an episode of the wiki cast for about three days straight but we didn't record it uh, it's, it's what it kind of felt like. But yeah, so apologies, uh, everybody, that we, we deprived you of that obviously stellar content. But, you know, Sol's Law, <laughs> not everything is about content. And yeah. that's coming from me. I'm just so yeah. So, and since then, you're now back in Exeter, and I, I I'm back back here at, at hard at work. Just having released the uh, big video that I've been working on for a month, which is great. Can't wait to see that one flop. Was um, this the nuclear? Yes, one? the nuclear power. One, I saw that. I haven't, I haven't watched it yet, but somewhat of a firestorm in the comments, but that was exactly what I expected. So you know, say, say la vie. Well, um, and conversations, I've... conversation. Any publicity is good publicity. Blah blah blah. Yep, yeah, it's good watch time. It's good. People commenting is good. You know, says the algorithm 
that tells the algorithm that oh, you know, this is good stuff. But mm-hmm. people are people are getting pissed off. Yeah. Recommend this to more people. Yeah. Um. So yeah, but, you know, it's it's fine. Uh, I've, it's just strange being back and actually recording content because I mean, even that video I recorded such quite a while ago now, and it it just takes so long to edit as a project. Mm. You know, um, mm. I've been used to doing uh by Twitch streams, uh, Twitch TV four slash Dr Simon Clark, everyone. Uh, but actually doing a podcast is a bit of a a novelty. But so okay, we talk about Wikipedia articles, don't we? We do, we do indeed. Yeah. Right. What can you tell me about this? So okay, Pierce Powerman and his creed. Right, so this is... Yeah, Pierce the Plowman's Creed. And so this was a piss take of the different uh, orders of monks. Yeah, it's lampooning the four orders of friars. It's a medieval alliterative poem of 855 lines. There's helpfully on this article uh, a subsection titled Significant Contents, which I might just give you a little little bit of an idea as to where the kind of the general japery comes in. Okay, like sure. much political or religious poetry of the alliterative revival, uh, the poem takes the form of a quest for knowledge. It is narrated by a layman who, is, who has memorised nearly all of the rudimentary text demanded by the Fourth Lateran Council. He can read and is able to recite the Ave Maria and Pater Noster proficiently, yet he does not know the creed. He seeks help from the friars, first, fr- first turning to the Franciscans, then the Dominicans, followed by the Austin friars and the, Carmel- the Carmelites. Mm -hmm. But rather than learning anything of value, all he hears are imprecations. Each order savagely attacks one of its revival groups um, of the medicants. The Franciscans denounce the Carmelites. The Carmelites denounce the Dominicans, etc., etc., etc. The entire poem seems like an uproarious uh, inversion of Cantos 6 and 7 uh, of Dante's Paradiso. That's interesting. Just as Dante has the Dominican Aquinas and the Franciscan Bonaventure, uh, lauding one another, one, one another's orders, so the creed poet makes the medicants exchange abuse. Dun, 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 dun. It's an absolute riot, Simon. You'll love it. It's a real hoot. <laughs> I, I was trying to think of what to say. I, just, I was like, oh, this is Dan's territory. It's got it does tea. sound really... I, I, I it's want got to church. read this. Oh, boy. We, I, we are yet to transform fully into a Dan Reads poetry podcast, but by gum, we are giving we're it a go. Well, I mean, I mean... Since since the poetry has been going down rather well, certainly in my mind anyway, um, on the podcast, I've been doing little little brief readings of poetry on Instagram. I have seen some of these, yes. I mean, I haven't listened to them because I don't watch Instagram stories with the audio on. Uh, well, I've actually uploaded them to um, IGTV so they can go up in full. So you only get a little you only get a little taster in the story, but then you have to head over to watch the full thing. But I've had some really, really lovely feedback and I think people seem to quite like them. So that's been really nice. And I did a new one but the Dan, other day. By... What is your Instagram? If people want to listen to these, what is your Instagram? Oh, it's at Dan Moore. D-A-N-M-A-W. Piece of cake. Head on over. Oh, it's not Daniel J. Moore. No, that's my Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, at Dan Moore. Uh, is my Instagram and there's some really cool we've featured so far I Am by John Clare who I rant and rave about on this podcast regularly uh, so you what? rant and rave <laughs> moving swiftly on um, <laughs> you, that's not even the first time you've done that no no well this is my rant is your poll you mean but I say poll correctly no 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 oh Dan I I I I, I... I can't believe I'm saying this, but we have a special guest who's just appeared. You're joking. We have. I don't know if, how easily you're going to be able to hear this, but I have with me the one and only Jasmine, my little ah. girl. Do you want to say anything, Jasmine? Yeah, that no, sound, that's the that's the comforting silence of a cat I know and love. Ah, Lovely. Ah, ah, ow, claws. Yep, okay, that's fine. There you go. Yeah, she's just jumped off. Um, she's not a terribly vocal cat. She's she will only yell at you if. Well, actually, no. Sometimes she is, and sometimes she isn't. Like she'll yell at you in the mornings if she wants to be fed, which I feel like is fair enough. Uh, and she'll kind of psych herself up to jumping up on the sofa. Yeah. She'll kind of be like ah, 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 and then like <laughs> properly go for it. Um. But yeah, and she's not much of a purrer, but oh, I love her so much. Well, I, I was able to see my dog when I was at home, which was oh. amazing. The the golden boy, Fiverr, named after one of the rabbits in Warship Down. Black Lab, mm-hmm. four years old. Um, he is an absolute treat and a gem and wonderful. And it was really, really lovely to see him. Uh, mm. So I feel very refreshed. I've been doing lots of wholesome... This will come as no surprise to anyone who 
even semi-regularly listens to this thing we call a podcast. Um, I'm still on furlough and have been since mm-hmm. April. So it's been quite a slow year. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I did a load of gardening the other day. I've completely gutted the garden of stuff that I've been growing because it's starting to kind of not produce anything anymore aside from the tomatoes. Um, yeah, you said that you were uh, eye deep in courgettes or... No, yeah, I'm yeah. watering courgettes. Yeah, yeah. Wait. It was <laughs> eye deep in courgettes. <laughs> I don't think I've ever. I don't think I've ever heard that expression. <laughs> eye deep. <laughs> Uh, uh, no, I think it, I think what you actually said was something about eye watering courgettes, but I may have I, I, I was glossing I'm, over what you were putting on social. I might also have said I was watering courgettes, so I mean, who uh, knows? Yes, <laughs> could quite have been any of these that. things. So I've cleared everything out. I've cleared the raised beds. I went to the shops the other day and bought some bulbs that I'm going to put in the ground in a couple of weeks, so I get some colour in spring. Um, it's been quite. I mean, it's been quite pleasant, really. My neighbours have put a new fence up. Which is great because I didn't oh. have to pay for it. So I've got a nice new fence. Wait, why um, did you need a new fence? Because uh, one of the, well, at least one of the fence posts was really quite rotten. Um, and it was oh, okay. leaning at an alarming angle. And with winter coming, winter is coming, um, then I, uh, I thought it would probably best to, uh, I thought it was probably best to sort the fence out. So I let the neighbours do it. <laughs> But yeah, it's been, I mean, it's just been go, go, go. Oh, also, uh, to give you an idea of how slow my days are, I colour coordinated my bookshelf yesterday for like two hours. I saw this. Yeah, like it was definitely been, it's not, when it hasn't been your day, your month or your year, so you just colour coordinate your bookshelf. bookshelf, Yeah. (laughs) However, this weekend, talk about naught to 60 in in a flash, um, I'm singing again. Oh? Yeah, the cathedral choir, well, the back row, uh, uh, an octet, is back. Um, I'm singing I'm singing two services on Saturday, four services on Sunday, and I'm giving a recital next Thursday. Ooh, what are you doing for the recital? Ah, I'm so glad you asked. I've, I've got them down in a little note. I'll see what you think. It's basically, it leaves you in no doubt that I am a soppy romantic tenor and like singing soppy romantic pastoral things so we kick we, off with we, we need kick that off with a handle. five sigma certainty anyway well, Dan. Like, exactly <laughs> um we i've got two pieces of handle to start waft her angels through the skies by from from jephtha and where are you walk classic nice um i've done i've then got a french piece called le exquise by reynaldo hahn i've then got some dowland weep you no more sad fountains and come heavy sleep uh, some Quilter, Go Lovely Rose, and then I'm ending with some Vaughan Williams, so The Infinite Shining Heavens and Whither Must I Wander. Oh, yeah, very soppy romantic, Dan. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah. that's you in a nutshell, that yeah. recital. I'm, 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 I'm also not going to have my hair cut before it so I can really play the kind of foppish dandy up to <laughs> kind of like a, the nth degree, you know? <laughs> People would be like, hang on, who's singing that? And then they like stick their head around a column and they'd be like, ah, uh, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. Sense. yeah. It's that one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, but um, I'm very well, excited for services. We've got, I've got four ordination services over the weekend, a Eucharist. Uh, I'm cantoring a plain song Eucharist on Sunday and there's something else going on that I can't remember. But yeah, it's going to be full on. And, and when do you think you're going to be back at, um, well, not furloughed anymore? Well, I'm hoping, subject to, in, in, in most correspondence so far, I should be coming off furlough at the end of September to start work in October. However, um, I haven't heard anything yet still, so I wouldn't be surprised if I'm extended through October. Bloody hell. I know. Well, <laughs> what on the subject of hopeless romance, there is something that I should relay at this point in the podcast which is that um, I had a delightful time with a past guest of the of the wiki cast Hannah Witten ah of course who got married uh, on the weekend uh, and it was a del- it was really it was much like our holiday actually I think that's probably what sparked me to remember this um, it, it was ju- it did just feel like we'd left 2020 behind mm. uh, and they had a small number of people um, they live streamed the ceremony um which was kind of, it was the first time I'd ever been to a wedding in like pajama bottoms and a t-shirt, which, which felt nice. But I still stood up <laughs> when, when the officiant or whatever the person's called who sort of runs the service, when they were like, if we could all please stand, I just reflexively stood up off my sofa whilst I was watching. Very good. Um, and um, yeah, so they live streamed that and then they had this uh, reception. And um, had a lovely meal. So congrats to Hannah and Dan. But also I... Um, I when I was d- during the meal and actually for most of the evening I was sat opposite and had a lovely chat with uh, Dodie Clark. 
You're Sorry, right. what? Yeah, yeah, just um, I just so, got the window. Hang on, just give me a moment. So uh, we basically had a chat for a long time, and um, it turns out we've actually got quite a fair bit in common. She's um, she was a massive Star Trek fan when she was a kid. She's a bit of a dork, um, and uh, and basically I brought up the podcast, and um, hang on, let me just message her to join the call now. No, I'm joking. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> How, uh... <laughs> oh, oh, God. Please, please don't do that ever again. Ever, ever, ever again. No, I, oh, I mean... God, I just started sweating from, like, orifices I didn't even know I had. Good, <laughs> good God. Oh. Oh. You know, you know when you, you know when you, um, when you're crossing a road and you don't spot a car and you're stepping out into traffic and you suddenly look left and you get that, you see the car and you suddenly feel intense heat all over your body and your kind of heart jumps into your throat. Yeah, yeah. that's what happened to me just now. Uh, well, she actually, I, when I mentioned the podcast to her, she did seem uh, interested in coming on, but she said maybe in a couple of months because she's had. F- to do recently so she wouldn't have anything to talk about yeah um so yeah but uh yeah so she um uh, she had a really lovely time and uh i mentioned you and the podcast and she seemed she seemed interested so maybe going forwards Golly. Uh, well i'll need to start we'll gearing up even on the even for the possibility of because i mean dear readers we'll work good, on we'll, we'll, we'll work good, on the dan has grief. a little breakdown episode yeah <laughs> i'm gonna be like a character out of an austin novel I do declare, oh, Mrs. Clark, I couldn't possibly, you know. <laughs> you, just, oh, like, you just hear like she, uh, say something and then you're like, ha, ha. And it was at this point in the recording, Simon knew he f***ed up. No, I mean, ah, uh, sorry. No, Um. so he, his mic did a really weird thing and it's going to sound really jarring for the next minute or two, but just bear with and then it will get back to normal. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I want this to happen so bad. Good grief. Well, I'm glad that she. I'm glad Hannah had a really lovely day, and it was. Yeah. Uh, it was. It was nice. I, I wish her and uh, wish her and Dan well. And there was actually a, a little sort of positive that came out of the whole thing. Actually, was that, and I hadn't considered this at all. Was that um, because you can have 30 people at a wedding reception at the moment? She decided to not have a photographer uh, because it would have been one towards the capacity. She'd rather have a friend there. Uh, mm-hmm. But so instead, she had a variety of um, disposable cameras that she just put on the tables and told people to, you know, be the photographer for this event, take pictures that you think we would want. And um, she got them developed like the day after, and they're and they're really nice. They they're one of these things that like if if Pixel Girl and I had that at our wedding, I'm sure we would very happily have like an album of just these physical photos. Because yeah. it's there's something so intensely personal about that the style of photo that you get from a disposable camera, you know, like Absolutely. there's some something about it that's so like lo-fi almost. I think I think for especially for our generation, it that's probably true because we would have we would probably all remember going on family holidays when we were little, you know, kind of like mm. under the age of kind of I don't know five or six. Um, and it was quite common to take a disposable camera then. Hmm. So looking through albums where where those those were the kind of devices used would probably be quite nostalgic. Yeah, I, which makes me wonder what kids growing up now, what would they view as being the nostalgic technology? Will they view like certain Instagram filters as being like nostalgic posts? In the same way that we have Instagram filters at the moment that have like, you know how like old digital cameras would put the date and the time in like a little orange digital font in the corner? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like what's that, What what's the 20 year in the future version of that going to be? You oh, know, what, know, what at the moment is going to be considered nostalgic? Is it going to be, I don't know, possibly using any form of fossil fuel? <laughs> like yeah. being like, oh, chuck, chuck some coal in the power station back like we used to. Yeah, or, the log, log like burners that. are going to go out of fashion and it's just going to be like a charcoal grate. Yeah, yeah. It, I don't know. It's, I mean, trying to trying to predict... Because what is it? It's everything... History is a kind of... Nos, no, what is it? Imagining the future is a kind of nostalgia. Is that the right quote? It's a John Green quote. Mm. Uh, yeah, imagining the future is a kind of nostalgia. And, I, and what we're now trying to do is the next level, which is trying to imagine the nostalgia that will take place in the future. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, this get, all, I mean, it's all getting a bit, bit too meta here. Bit, yeah, a bit mental. Uh, have we got anything more of a value to discuss in Piers Plowman's Creed? I mean, I think I think that's just oodles and oodles of value. But whether right, Dan, whether I can go into it now, what's your core sure. piece of the week, Dan? <sighs> Stop, core piece of the week. Now hit the jingle. 
And this will be my piece of the week. Drum roll, please. I've broken the rule in the past where it hasn't been a, a singular piece, but rather a work, and that has been allowed. Yeah, minor violation of the rules. Yeah, a mi- yeah, just a minor, a, a yellow card. Sin bin <laughs> with me. Um, it off to the Catholic skip. And uh, my piece this week is is a piece by Britain. Oh, which bit of Britain? Uh, <laughs> Benjamin, <laughs> you fool, <laughs> you fool, Benjamin Britain. <laughs> Um, and it's his um, Les Illuminations, the Illuminations. Um, I have never a, heard of this before. It's it's Opus 18. It's a work for tenor uh, and an orchestra. And it's absolutely thrilling. In fact, uh, the recording I most enjoy... All right, well, this is the interesting thing. So I mentioned I'm doing a recital next week. And I've been listening to a lot of the pieces that I will be doing next week. And one particular tenor keeps coming up and that is Anthony Rolf Johnson who I absolutely adore his voice I think it's superb um, however if you put in Britain's Les Illuminations into YouTube you will find a video from the proms several years ago featuring oh golly what's his name Ian, Ian Bostridge, Bostridge. Yeah. yeah and Ian Bostridge, Bostridge is cool uh, he is a, I mean he he is a, I think he's a bit of a Marmite tenor you either love him or hate him because he has a really unique um, oh, I style. remember watching this with you and Sam Foster. It, this yeah. was the it's the bizarre bit of French poetry. Oh, and... it's absolutely crazy. Yeah, I remember this. Um, in fact, I will just read you briefly a translation of the first no, few no, I, lines. I, okay, can we get the original French, please? Okay. <laughs> right. Oh, good grief. Um, <laughs> J'ai seul la chef de cette parade sauvage. Se sont déviés, c'est un peuple pour qui se sont montés ces allégans et ces libans de rêve, des chalets, non, des chalets, des cristal et des bois, c'est mouvant sur des rails et des points. Something invisible. Da da. French. <laughs> um, but it's Adam, really. Can you please put the music from Ratatouille under that, please. <laughs> It's a lesser known part of the Wikicast. We haven't seen it for a while, but it's Dan and Simon Mangle Languages. We haven't. Oh, it's, it's an iconic section. If you had that in your section. bingo card, mark it off now. Um, but and and the, what was the translation of that, though? You wanted to do the translation. Yeah, I'm just trying to find it now. It's something like, I hold the key to the... In fact, hang on. If I just find the video, I can, um, I can, I can translate it as he sings. Or rather, read it. Obviously, I'm not translating it. That would be ridiculous. I alone hold the key to this wild parade... What towns these are, this is a people from whom these dreamlike Alleghenies and Lebanons arose. And it's just, it's just, cla- it's like Britain going nuts. You know how he sets just mental text so well. Yeah, it's brilliant. So I would highly recommend folk listen to Britain's The Illumination. Um, either the Anthony Rolf Johnson recording, which you can probably find on Apple Music or Spotify, or I think in this instance... Ian Bostridge probably does trumpet because it's such a dramatic performance. He he he, this, he makes these really bizarre, quite guttural sounds, and it's it's a piece of theatre, not just a piece of music. Also, for those of you who are going to watch the Ian Bostridge performance, look at how much of his mouth moves when he's singing, because he's got fifty he, he percent. Yeah, he only, he he produces all of his vowels asymmetrically, which is really. It's quite yeah, it's really cool. I remember talking to my singing teacher about it, and uh, yeah, he he he's quite divisive, but doubtlessly brilliant. Much like this podcast, well, apart from we're not brilliant, of course, and nobody we're cares. Just, we're just we're just doubtless. Do you want to do a quick critics' corner? I'm just trying to think because I've been watching. Um, oh, what have, what have I been watching recently? Umbrella Academy. And I've been reading books, but other than that, it's not huge amounts to talk about. I mean, as coming as no surprise, I've been working my way through more poetic anthologies, but I won't go into detail because I don't want to upset you. Um, what have I been watching? Oh, I've got a new television. Okay, let's 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 do a bit of critics' corner then. It's a good television. That's the end of the corner. No, it's um, it's it's good. It's an LG. It's Wait, 40... Dad, we're not in... <laughs> we need to introduce the section. <laughs> what do you mean? That was your introduction. Fine. Keep it in. Let's How do we, Adam? We don't keep all no, of that no. in. No, no, no. We don't normally do it. We don't normally 
Yeah, we do something like, oh, and we find ourselves in Critics' Corner. But, but not isn't today. That, isn't that basically what you said? You were like, well, no. let's just do a Critics' Corner. That was me saying, to you, that was some off, that was the, the italics in the script, Dan. It's oh, like, I'm sorry. The italics oh, didn't come through. What, what a sorry. great yeah, idea, was, sarcastically. I listened I listened to you and it was just wingdings hitting me. There were no italics. <laughs> there was no, it was just... <laughs> If we if we ever do like a script in like a printed script, it's obviously going to be like Comic Sans and Papyrus. It's yeah, going to yeah. be the worst like eye watering fonts. Copperplate <laughs> Gothic. Oh, what's this script? Oh, it's called Black Adder. Oh, uh, I, li- I like it. Legible. It's gonna it's gonna make it look really old and serious. People will take <laughs> me seriously. Oh, I know. I'll dip it in tea, and it'll make it look like an old document. Perfect. I'll burn the edges. Just golden anyway so we find ourselves in critics corner <laughs> and i've got <laughs> i've bought a new a a, right there <laughs> quick quick jingle it i've bought a new television it's an lg and it's quite good it's smaller than my other one which as simon can attest to was enormous it was vast. Um, just silly and i've bought a new nice kind of stand for it and as a result in, an, in a further attempt to kill time uh, as i don't have any, much else to do with my life at the moment um, I'm thinking of re- I'm thinking of getting some new furniture in 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 the way of chairs and sofa and things, and I've been looking is this, up. Is this a quarter life crisis? I was thinking mm, this the other day. Well, yeah, basically, yeah. What? But the, you're doing a lot of the things that people do in their co- in their mid or three quarter life crisis. Yeah, but that's like, because I'm an old soul at heart. But what's going to happen when you reach the age of like fifty or seventy? You know, <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to think about what will happen. To be honest. I'm probably going to, when I hit 50, I'm going to Benjamin Button and I'm going to reverse and I'm going to live my entire life backwards again. <laughs> what, so by the age of like 80, you'll be, you'll be in skate parks and making, doing Fortnite dances. Yeah, I'll be doing the Fortnites and, and, and smoking the weeds. <laughs> it's going to be, it's going to be wild. I can't wait. Oh, wow. That's, that's a lot right there. That's a yeah. lot. But oh, this is, this is why I was going to mention it. This is why it's valid to me to, for me to discuss it in Critics Corner because with buying the new television, I now also have a Disney Plus subscription. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what have you watched on it? I've watched so much; it's ridiculous. <laughs> I've watched I watched The Little Mermaid <laughs> like five days ago. I watched Cars. Thunder always comes after lightning. <laughs> <laughs> um, I watched Frozen Two, and it was absolutely piss poor. Um, oh, okay. I watched I've... Treasure Planet, which is incredible. And inc- I mean, I've, I always I mean, you already knew that. that. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. The score is amazing. Um, and then. F- through recommendation of a recent sideways video, I rewatched the Goofy movie. Oh, I've, I've seen. I've, I've not seen the video, and I've not seen the movie. Ah, oh, it's good. It's really okay. good, and the points raised are, t- are. Yeah, it's it's a great watch, and a smattering of other things. I think I watched Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker again, and just kind of wandered in and out of the room while it was on because it was getting slightly annoying. Have you um seen the Hamilton film that they made? I haven't. No, it's worth watching. Like I, I don't know if you've listened to the score much. Not really. It's definitely, especially as like a dissection of a n- not so much for us, but obviously for Americans, a very prominent historical figure, yeah. and the method of uh, of telling his story via hip hop and sort of the parallels that are being drawn between the kind of hip-hop scene from, I, I guess, a couple of decades ago now uh, mm. compared to the Founding Fathers. Because um, what you need to do, really, is watch it and then watch a video from a fantastic YouTube channel. And I'm going to link this in the show notes um, called uh, What's So Great About That? Um, my friend Grace. And she did a video on why Hamilton is and isn't incredibly subversive. Right. But it's it, it's one of these things that without seeing it it's kind of difficult to explain but it's a bit like what i imagine audiences when they first saw hamlet or something like that they they must have they must have had a similar reaction of we're seeing something special this is no one's done anything like this before and we're going to be talking about this for a long time yeah. that's what it feels like to watch hamilton so i i i think if you can find time in your packed schedule to watch all that, right steady that on steady on before next episode there will be plenty sure. of people who will send in correspondence i have no doubt especially okay. if you don't like it <laughs> so but it's worth it's, it's fantastic i think it's really really worth watching okay i'll give it a watch before next episode 
Um, Because I, uh, the the only thing, as I hinted to in our italicized conversation earlier, um, I watched the new season of Umbrella Academy featuring our friend Ed Dunn uh, as Clown. Of course. And it was great. I I think I might actually have preferred it to the first season. I think it hung together a lot better. It certainly had a more satisfying final kind of arc. Um, It's a wee bit obvious and it's kind of popcorn TV. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's it's it, yeah it's fun it was good. it was very enjoyable, um, and then uh, what else? I've been watching Star Trek. Um, I'm going to be watching more Anthony Bourdain. I haven't really watched. I haven't watched a movie in a very long time. I've just realised I should I should uh, give it a go. Really? Mm. Have you? I, I, are you tempted to go and see Tenet? I am tempted to see it actually. I was I just that just made me remember as well. Um, with Nail and I, have you seen? I've seen with bits Nail and of I. it. I, I know that it has the famous drinking game. Oh, it's so... I haven't watched it in a long time, and I watched it the other day, and it's just absolutely brilliant. It's so good. We should... We should Next time you're down, because I have all of... I have all of those things I bought from yeah, so the last... We have, we yeah. have actually used Wikicast funds. We'll take... Yeah. Like, hang on. Wait a second, Dan. This is a perfect transition. He puts in italics. Go to Patreon Corner. <laughs> We find ourselves in Patreon Corner. Patreons the boy are really important. Can be taught. <laughs> um, the Patreon uh, for our glorious thing that we do, which apparently people like and for some has reason. legs. What is um, wrong with you people? <laughs> yeah, bizarre. Is vital because it allows dear, lovely readers like yourself to support this podcast in ways more than just downloading the episode because we need to obviously pay for hosting and if we do lines of merch which we hopefully might be doing some new merch soon-ish um, but what mm-hmm. Simon was alluding to is that we've used some of this money if you cast your collective minds back several episodes we were talking about national liquors mm-hmm. um, and as I in, managed as to... in alcoholic drinks not like yes. the national representative of a country who's got a particularly long tongue yes exactly um or the band Kiss, for instance, because they've very all good. got long time. Yeah, thank you. Very, Thanks very so good. Much. Thanks, guys. Um, so I've been and bought a load of miniatures of national drinks. And we have, I mean, I've got a small bottle of Unicum here. There's some <laughs> There's some 80% off. ABV rum uh, from Austria, which is the strongest thing that we've got here. And I should um, point out, you, you got a bottle of each of these, but each for us. Yes, with the exception of the absinthe and the unicum. Yeah. So we're going to get um, slaughtered. We're going to yeah, get absolutely so it's gonna be, slaughtered. It's going to be... But we're I gonna think, I think we, should, we should drink these and then watch with Nail and I. Oh, my God. Because that... It. And then do a commentary. We could do a yeah, commentary absolutely. track as an exclusive for our patrons. Absolutely. Oh, um, no. So we've got bl- plenty here. And there's, I mean, there's, we've, got, we've got vodka and port and limoncello and whiskey and absinthe and what's this? Calvados and oh, me, oh my. and I know lions and tigers and bears. Well, um, and so there is a plan for us to meet up in Bristol uh, mm. in a couple of weeks' time. I am hoping that that is still going to go ahead because there have been recent changes to social distance, well, to the sort of lockdown measures. Yeah. So well, the current plan is we're going to film this in a couple of weeks, but that is yeah. dependent on us being Getting able to there. do so. And it would also mean that I can only come up on the Saturday because with choir resuming. I won't obviously I will be I'll have commitments on the Sunday so I won't have the whole weekend. Oh of course um, yeah. But I I've, I've spoken to Adam about this. So we'll we'll come up with a plan. There'll be a plan. Um but we won't we wouldn't have been able to buy these things without the support of our patrons. Um on our Patreon. So That's patreon.com forward slash the wikicast, where people support the show by either a dollar or five dollars a month. If you think this is an important thing in the world, firstly, what's wrong with you? Secondly, thank you very much. You can Thanks go so to patreon.com forward slash the wikicast, pledge yourself to either Team Jasmine or Team I'm a Literal Piece of Human Garbage. Lovely. I would like to say an enormous thank you of the top dogs. We have, of course, Lexi at front desk. Eve Sharples, Alistair Fortune, Peter Reed, uh, Maggie, Colin J. Brown, Codzo, Ben McMurtry, Jay Wright, and Eric Bolliger. Thank you so much. I, however, would like to thank the sensible people who support Jasmine and keep her flush with cat treats. Uh, and those people are 
Thomas Hill, Simon P, Jack Easton, Izzy Christie, Tom Withington, Naffy Iftikar, Chris Christopher Rither Ward, Layla Medina, Oliver Craigie, Will Jenis Humphreys, Rents Kirk, Oliver Burkhart, Omar Miranda, Cole Mansfield, Princess Andromeda, Choco Cat, Bendant, Isabel Ostrowski, and the one, the only, the man with half a lung, Dan Hanvey. Ah, oh, hero. Hero the, of the Soviet... My I served the Soviet Union. I served the Soviet Union. <laughs> I served the Soviet Union. Thank you very much, guys. You make it possible for us to do this questionable podcast. Top lot. Okay, Dan, and we find ourselves in a jam-packed correspondence corner i think we need to to rattle through some of these because good lord it's been a while since we've done an episode and there are plenty of people who have written in with their thoughts so yeah do you want to kick us off with an email let's let's speed down okay gas 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 we have an email here from jean-claude Murray, Murray, Murray. I think it's Murray. Uh, saying, "Dear Messrs. Clark and Moore, I trust you are safe and well. My apologies if my English grammar is not to the standard with other readers. Firstly, sorry, Simon. I, I'm definitely a dog person. I'm the proud father of a German Shepherd Lab mix called Chloe." Oh. I just need some advice on a topic that is more at home for Simon. Currently, I'm doing a BSc uh, chemistry and physics double major at the University of South Africa. My previous Ooh. qualifications are in finance, and I'm also a registered accountant. I've only recently decided to rather follow my passion in physics. Unfortunately, I cannot afford to be a full-time student at the university, so I've opted to do my degree full-time. However, I'm working full-time as well. This means I do not have any lectures, classes, workshops, etc. All you have is the textbook, Google, and stationery. So I'm teaching myself physics, oh, maths, and wow. chemistry. Khan Academy does help. My degree is at the same place as other full-time students, so it does get quite difficult managing the work eight to five and then coming home to study. I, um, I also have a fiancé, and we have a small apartment together. Good grief. I'm trying to balance being a full-time employee, full-time student, paying bills, and also have a social life. I'll be doing my master's and PhD after my degree. I really want to get a funded PhD at a UK uni. What would you have done in this situation? If you can fix your PhD code, I'm sure you can advise on this. Kind of regards. <laughs> John claude Murray. my age was uh, 22 and four 365ths. I like it. That's 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 good. Uh, assuming, of course, uh, that the number of leap years is. Oh, has he accounted? He probably has. I don't. He, if he's a registered accountant, I'm sure that he knows what he's doing. Um, right, uh, Jean. So, wow. Yeah, doing full time job and then trying to do student. Um, I feel like ring fencing time in the evening is probably a good shout. This is, I, I guess, the equivalent here is what I did in terms of doing the PhD and then also running the YouTube channel. And I basically just kind of had working hours, which for me was basically like nine till twelve most evenings. And I think it's important to do that for two reasons. Firstly, because it means that you will actually do it if you have a certain time that you're meant to turn up. It's almost like office hours. But also, the work is not allowed to spill out of that time. So it doesn't impact your work during the day. And it means that you have time outside of those hours where you do socialize and you do, you know, you spend time with your fiance and, you know, you do other hobbies and things like that. So I feel like having kind of dedicated hours for doing the work is is probably like a really important first step. Um, the other thing which I learned, well, th definitely use software to kind of keep track of what you're doing, which I'm, you probably are already, but something that I would definitely do if I was to start a degree in my spare time now would be use something like Notion, actually it probably would be Notion, um, to keep track of everything that I do because otherwise it's just you'd lose track of where you are if you were doing everything in analog um, which obviously you will be doing a lot of because it's maths and physics um you know you've got to have a good filing system so having being organized is super important um and the other thing is to use online resources. Um, so you're saying you have your textbook and Google. So use the textbook, use more than one textbook on each subject if you can, and use a resource like Brilliant or Khan Academy um, to shore up your what you're doing. So you said that you're using Khan Academy. Um, so I, I feel like you're doing a lot of the good, a, a lot of the right things. I think it's also being making sure that you can do it over a long time period and just being nice and kind to yourself so that you don't burn out because i think that's probably the single biggest problem the single biggest problem you're going to face isn't that you can't do the work it's that you need to be able to do the work for a long period of time and not burn out so work in a sustainable way remember it's a marathon not a sprint and you know keep your eyes on the middle distance you know do the short-term stuff don't sweat about the long-term plans but just keep your eyes on the synoptic scale of like what's going to happen in the next couple of months and you'll do fine there you go. Some killer advice there. Trying my best. 
Oh god, I need to do some talking as well. Uh, ooh, okay. I have an interesting email here from Oliver Wright. Dear Messrs. Clack and Mac. <laughs> Whoa, that's new. I like it. <laughs> I like that. Uh, obligatory. Long-time reader, first-time writer here. I've just completed my two-month journey for the annals of Wikicast history. I'm imagining that's a bit like Gandalf in Minas Tirith, being like, and episode 34, 34 of the second season. Yeah. <laughs> um, I have just completed... Uh, from start to finish, and I have a couple of things to say. Firstly, my mind is mush, and my brain cells are depleting. Excellent. <laughs> Can't Excellent. say I'm surprised, Oliver. Uh, thank you. Secondly, thank you both for all that you do. You two do such brilliant work with this podcast and in your other endeavours. A lot of people don't appreciate you, and we're all lucky to have access to the wonderful stuff that you do. Well, thank you very much for those kind words. I don't wow. think they are deserved. Um, lastly, oh my good giddy aunt, I have never heard in my life so much about choral music. Yeah, <laughs> I would that, love to yeah. Say- You'll, ha- you'll get that. I love to say that I find your choral chit-chat enthralling, but truth be told, I don't understand a single word of what is said. <laughs> <laughs> so I simply tune out and listen to your lovely voices and all the excitement and emotion in them. It's surprisingly enjoyable tuning out the words and just hearing the sounds pass through my head. Well, that's Brilliant. basically what it's like listening to Latin music, to be fair. I mean, like music written in Latin, not music from like Latin America. In relation to choral music, I have a potential music recommendation for you both, and it's a bold shout, but here you go. Jesus is Born by Sunday Service Choir, which is Kanye West's Gospel Choir's debut album. Whoa. For context, okay. I am white, English, and not at all a person of faith, and I've never really taken an interest in gospel. But with that said, it's a really fun experience. I've been a tired Kanye fan for about four years now, and I truly love his music. Not so much his personality, but we can skip that for today. And he takes a few of his classic songs, such as Ultralight Beam and Jesus Walks, and reworks them into gospel tracks. I highly recommend it, and I'd be eager to hear both of your opinions on it sometime. Well, I mean, that's some homework for next episode. Good grief. I'll absolutely have a listen. So, hey, what's it called? Uh, Jesus is Born, Sunday Service Choir. Sunday Service Choir. Here it is. It's on Spotify. I'm going to save that to my, uh, my... library and listen to that later today when i'm painting wow what a great recommendation um yeah, cool i'll do my best to listen to that before the next episode so thank you both for being yourselves sending love from sunny old bradford regards Lovely. oliver age 19.13415468856947 years old p.s Brilliant. i'm team cat we've got an email here from uh jack easton uh and he says dear messrs Dr. Clark and more. Recently I decided to go back and read all the Wikicast episodes right from the start and one particular thought among many crossed my mind. Do you, Simon Clark, continue to decimate blocks of cheese just as in the old days? <laughs> also, in well, do you? Uh, I... I've been trying to get better at not just leaving teeth marks in the cheese. What I've been doing oh, is taking it out God, and cutting learning. it. God, he's learning. Look I at him, am, he's I, learning. But well I don't done. cut like slices like you do because I like having a hunk of cheese. So it will be like, there'll be like a, a perpendicular cut taking place in the block of cheese. That's fine. Cuts in the cheese is fine. Teeth marks in the cheese, much like elephant footprints in the butter, are not to be tolerated in the fridge. <laughs> also, in relation I've to the last episode... That joke. <laughs> can you Can you explain that joke to me about how can you tell if an elephant's been in your fridge by footprints in the butter? Is it just an absurdist joke or is there another I level think, that I'm missing? I think it's just an absurdist joke, isn't it? I, just, I, I don't get it. I don't understand you, Britta. I don't understand you at all. Also, in relation to the last episode, when can we expect the dedicated Old Man Dan podcast to begin? Uh, Adam's jingle was simply too good to only get one use. Look, I've been thinking a lot about it, and I need to put some idea. I need to put a pen to paper and come up with some ideas. But I would be very keen to do that. So we shall see. Watch this space. Uh, there be no puffer fish as red as I, Jack Easton, age seven hundred seven thousand four hundred ninety-seven days, fifteen hours, five minutes, and counting. P.S. Can confirm my clock has not stopped. I don't want to cause Dan any more distress this time round. Brilliant. Well, that's I'm- good. I'm going to speed through. That, that's, I reckon we could do like one or two more. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> sorry, let me do that again. I reckon we could do one or two more, uh, Dan. Um, <sighs> Thank you. Very good. This one comes from Kyle Vaughan, dear Messrs. Moore and Clark. Clark is the only part of this email that's written in Comic Sans. Thanks. Excellent. Excellent. Long time reader, I'd like to start off by saying that Poetry Corner has become my favourite part of the podcast. Okay, let's trash this. That's Where's the delete button? No, no, Kyle, keep Um, going. uh, I loved the first edition, and when Old Man Dan teased its return in the latest episode, I nearly lost my seat. 
There wouldn't be a dry seat in the house, Dan. Brilliant. Um, let me also say I was shocked at Simon's callous attitude towards the reading of poetry whatsoever. I'd like to suggest an instalment of Poetry Corner as I find it more accessible and engaging than Dan's choral piece of the week. Keep up the quality on content, Kyle. Noted. Duly noted. Duly noted. This one's from Samuel. It says, Dear Mrs. Clark and more, my name is Sasson. Sasson. Yeah, or Sasson. Sasson, I... I started binging Simon's PhD vlogs and subsequently this podcast in the same month that I started my master's thesis. My girlfriend moved to South America and lockdown began. You guys wow. have been my main connection to humanity to this period, for which I am grateful. As in my imagine, solitude, I kept imagine being... Imagine if this was the only record of humanity that was left to, like, future civilizations. I mean, like, just if, if, What is going on inside Sasan's brain right now? Like, we've fundamentally rewired it so that it is exclusively, like, dad jokes, Simpsons references, choral music and poetry. That's a terrifying thought. Sorry, yeah. as you were. As in my solitude, I kept being nudged towards madness by my Python code. It was therapeutic to watch Simon biting his laptop while suffering from similar <laughs> evil. This podcast also helps revive the quality of my English. I listen attentively every time Dan corrects Simon's English. I'd love to hear further details on why Simon is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I am an Iranian bloke born and raised in Iranian. Tehran. What, what, how do you just say Iranian? Yeah, Iranian. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, fair enough. I'm sorry. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. Time, Simon. <laughs> all right. All right. Yes, fine. I'm reading the email. I am an Iranian bloke, born and raised in Tehran. <laughs> I dropped out of uh, I dropped out of uni after deciding that engineering wasn't for me. I moved to Kuala Lumpur to attend an Australian university and studying biotechnology for two semesters. I had to give that up one, uh, due to financial problems. Two years later, I moved to Budapest, this time to study a bachelor in chemistry. I made it through all the series of unfortunate events of those four years and got my degree. Finally, I moved to a small town in Germany to study a master, master's in material science. I'm glad to report that I submitted my thesis five days ago. I'll start looking for jobs for my PhD, for PhD positions once I can remember how uh, I used to human before this shit began. Now, Dan, what is the title of this email? Because I feel like it's about to become important. Unicum, pronunciation, and more. <laughs> In the Wikicast episode 79 previous episode, you guys mentioned the national liquors of, of Iran and Hungary, both well, of which Iran, you mispronounced. Okay, okay. Both of which you mispronounced as expected. Uh, I took it upon myself to rectify your mistakes, amusing though they were. First, you mentioned ara or ara. This word translates to uh, sweat oh. and refers to a few Ugh. different drinks in a few neighboring countries, including Turkey, Armenia, and Iran. <laughs> um, the Iranian version is made uh, by distilling raisins. Yeah, huh. that's one of that's my favourite sentence uh, in all correspondence so far. The Iranian version is made by distilling made by raisins. distilling raisins. Perfect. Yeah, absolutely love it. The alcohol content could range between could range between forty percent and seventy percent. Uh, the wide range is due to alcoholic drinks being illegal in uh, Iran and Ara always being homemade. I will I include think it's a the file back of the for the... It's it's more of a ah ah. <laughs> Me hearties. I will include a file for the Persian pronunciation. Next, you mentioned Unicum. No, 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 hang on. I'm so so th we have the files here, which we'll oh, put see. in the episode now. I'm going to guess that the, the Q is meant to be like a glottal stop. It's meant to be more like an Arak, because that's when I did right. a little bit of... Arak. Yay! <laughs> hang yeah, on, I'm okay. listen to it again. I see. Arak. 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 It's, it's quite a hard thing to do. We don't do it in English at all. No. Uh, they, go, they go on to say, next you mentioned Unicum. I'm going to have some trouble enjoying it now. I've heard your pronunciation of it. It's pronounced. Refer to the audio file, please. And as Dan so, said, it is very similar to Jägermeister, just a touch stronger and a tad bitter. However, if you ask any Hungarian to name their national liquor, they are likely to mention Palinka as their signature drink. Palinka is made from the uh, distillation of various fruits. Uh, okay, pronunciation so also attached. But how are we supposed to pronounce uni Unicum? Put the file in... Oh, what? Unicum. 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 I think we're still going to call it Unicum, aren't we? Yeah, Unicum is much better. Much <laughs> and then better. Palinka? Palinka. Palinka. So the, the, it's like the a, a, emphasis is on the A. Palinka. Yeah. Palinka. I see. Okay, cool. Oh, I guess I, I remember blog enough. I'll write again once I figured out what to, uh, what to do after my master's. Thank you again for the podcast. I bid you adieu till next time. Yours truly, Sasan, aged 100 days older than Simon. If yes, if Dan exact. is interested, I could translate one to two short per. Ooh, yes. Send me some translated Persian poems and I shall read them uh, when we get them through. That, I love this podcast. Like, How else are we going to have got that into our lives? That we, we, I also love this podcast. You know, learning how to pronounce the stuff and then somebody be like, oh yeah, I can send you some Persian poetry if you want, like translated. Is it Rumi? Is that the name of the... Or Rummy? Presumably it's not Rummy. <laughs> it's... Um, is, is that the most? Is that the famous Persian poet? 
Golly, I don't know. It's like, are you M I? No, I'm not. <laughs> You're <Okay>. me. <laughs> are you me? Um, yeah, Ru- oh, I have no idea how I'm supposed to pronounce it, but yeah, okay, yeah, he was, he was the, he has been described as the most popular poet in the United States. Golly, interesting. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, no, do send us some over, um, Sasan. I apologise if we're completely mangling how to pronounce your name, as we almost certainly are, Sasan. <laughs> If I marry you, I take the north. Sasa. <laughs> oh God, that's it. We're deteriorating, Dan. We're rapidly deteriorating. Uh, well, what, what have we learned today? Let's let's wrap this all up. We've learned so. We've learned an alarming amount today. We've learned about Pierce the Plowman's Creed, the medieval alliterative, alliterative poem. Mm-hmm. Uh, we discussed our brief little jolly up into North Yorkshire. We yes. had an interesting spell in Critics Corner and general kind of discussion of what's been going on in our lives. Dan has a, a, a smaller TV, but is it actually a better TV, or is it, is it just the? I fact- think the I think the resolution is actually better. It's 4K UHD. Ooh, very so pretty, very yeah, fancy. Pretty, oh, ambassador, you're spoiling us with this this 4K UHD TV. Dan nearly had a heart attack. Actually, Adam, could you just drop in the uh, sound of of Dan nearly having a heart attack in just one more time? <sighs> oh, oh, oh God, please. Lovely. Thanks, Adam. Very Thanks much very enjoyed much. that. Cheers. <laughs> and then some fantastic correspondence. This is a, a return to form. Hopefully we're going to be back on a regular schedule now that we've done our gallivanting around the country uh, and we can get back to doing an episode every other week. So do uh, please send us in stuff uh, to spongyelectric.gmail.com. We do, honestly, it's probably my favourite part of this whole podcast is hearing from the audience and uh, and learning stuff that we otherwise just just wouldn't. It's It's really, it's really great. That's all for this week's episode. Don't forget to subscribe to us on your podcasting service of choice. Join the Discord, and if you'd like to see our faces, and you actually will sometime soon, check out our YouTube channel, Spongy and Electric. Nonsense and irreverent jokes, translated poems, and other thoughts on the show can be sent to us at spongyelectric at gmail.com. We'd love to hear from you. Join us again for another tumble down the wiki rabbit hole, and And we'll we'll see see you you next time. time. Is the funniest man alive. Forehead like a heliport. Take a helicopter for a ride. <laughs> <laughs>